This is my buy to like cash flow. Since December 2018, I've bought 11 properties, I've stripped them out, refurbished them, and rented them out. I want to go through all the numbers and show you how much money they actually make, how much tax you have to pay, and what happens to the cash flow if this happens. And last week, that went up to a peak of 6.1%. I'll show you in a second why that matters. And can you actually use property to achieve financial freedom? So let's get started. The first property I ever bought was in Battersea Park in London in December 2018. So this is actually across the road from the £9 billion power station. I bought this property for 237150 and that was for a one bedroom flat. I then spent £51,130 on that property. That included the stamp duty, the refurb, the legals, finance, everything included in that was £51,000. And I converted that property into a two bedroom property, which was then revalued at £320,000. By the way, you might be looking to buy properties which are a lot more expensive than this or properties which are cheaper than this, but that doesn't really matter because you can then adjust these numbers to the properties that you're looking at in your area. The reason the new value matters is because I refinanced the property and so I got a new mortgage on that property based on the higher value. So when you work out the cash flow, it needs to be based on that new value rather than the price I actually paid for the property. So when the property was valued £320,000, the new mortgage on the property was £256,000. So the yearly market rent for that property is £21,000. And so if you divide that by 12, you end up getting the monthly rent, which is £1,750. And now we have to deduct all of the costs. When you're doing the cash flow, the biggest cost you have is your mortgage cost, so the mortgage interest. If you Google mortgage interest calculator, the one I use is Money Saving Expert. My mortgage on this property is £256,000. So if I I put in 256,000. The term doesn't really matter because it's interest only anyway. So that's almost a bit redundant. I think the rate for this was about, I think 3.9% or 4%. So the mortgage payments come to be about 885 pounds per month. Now, the next thing you have is the management cost. I self-manage all my properties, so I don't have a management cost, but if, if you had a budget that property and you didn't want to manage everything yourself and you're a letting agent, then you can probably just Google letting agents in your area. The next thing you have is the maintenance cost. So generally you account for 10 percent should be somewhat sufficient. The next thing you have is the insurance. Because this is not a house and this is a flat, I own the leasehold, which just means that imagine like an apartment building and if you own one of the flats in the building, you don't actually own the building, you just own your flat within that building. So each flat has to pay something called a service charge. So now when all the flats pay a service charge, you use that pot of money to basically maintain the building and it covers the building insurances and those sort of things. So on a flat, you typically wouldn't pay insurance, but you would pay a service charge. And so the service charge on this property comes to 100 pounds per month. And so the monthly cash flow comes to 590 pounds per month. So that is essentially taking the rent and deducting all of these costs. So to work out the yearly cash flow, all you have to do is take the monthly cash flow and multiply that by 12. And so you end up with 7,080 this property is owned in a limited company. So it's not like you get the 7,080 pounds, you then have to pay tax. You can just Google a corporation tax calculator. So let's say you make 7,080 pounds and you press calculate. So you're gonna pay 19% corporation tax, which they've announced that is gonna go up to 25%. So the tax on this is 1,345 pounds. But when you get your cash flow and you deduct tax, you end up with 5,735. So that is how much money it will make in a year. But let's just say you bought this property in your own personal name, then the tax would be a bit different. What would happen is this would be added on to your normal income and so you would pay whichever tax bracket you're in. Now there is one more thing a lot of people talk about how it's far beneficial to set up a limited company and it's tax efficient and the corporation tax is lower than the income tax and therefore it's amazing to have some properties in a limited company but here's the thing when you make £5,735 and you pay tax but you paid corporation tax so that £5,735 is still in a limited company. Now, if you wanna take that money out, you then have to pay your normal income tax in order to take that money out of the company and essentially pay yourself that as a salary or a dividend. And on investment. Let me get a paper to explain how this works. The return on investment is simply the amount of money you make divided by how much money you've invested. So let's say you make £100 a year, but you have to invest £1,000. So that is a 10% return on investment. Now, in order to work out the return on investment, we have to work out how much money did I actually invest into this property. I bought the property for 237,150 and then I spent 51,000 pounds to convert that into a two bedroom property. So my total investment was 288,000 pounds. That is how much money I spent. But once the property was converted into a two bedroom property, it was then revalued at 320,000 pounds. And at that stage, I got a new mortgage on the property and I got an 80% loan of the new value, which was 256,000 pounds. So I've spent 288 and I've got 256 back essentially. So really my money invested is the difference between the two which is this area here, which in this case was 31,799. That is my money left in, in that project essentially. So when it comes to working out the return on investment, the money I'm making every year from this property is 7,080 pre-tax and 
that has cost me 31,799 which basically leads to a return on investment of 22 pounds. Now, to be honest, the return on investment, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter that much. It's just, it's somewhat useful that if you want to compare to other investments, so maybe you're looking to invest in something else and that gives you a 15% return, this gives you a 20% return. So you can say, well, okay, I'll invest my money in this particular thing because it gives me a better return. But beyond that, it doesn't really matter too much to be fair. What does really matter if you want to make the most amount of money and get the highest amount of return on your money is the gross yield. The gross yield, your rent divided by the value of the property. So now in this case, the rent of the property is 21,000 and the value, the new value is 320,000 pounds. So that means the gross yield is 6.56%. If you round it, then it's 6.6% to the one decimal point. Okay, so the reason the gross yield matters is because of the stress test calculations when you have a buy to that property. So now let me just quickly explain how the stress test calculation works. Go to a mortgage interest calculator under mortgage debt. So the mortgage debt is £256. It's interest only mortgage. I think the rate was like 4.1% and then I'll click calculate. So now that comes to 875, which is pretty close to my mortgage payments, which were 885. When you buy a buy to let property, there's a stress test is basically 5.5% interest rate at 125% coverage ratio. I've got this property and my mortgage payments are £885 per month. That is based on an interest rate of 4.1%. But like I said, the stress test isn't at 4.1%, it's actually at 5.5%. If I was to put in 5.5%, click calculate, and now the monthly payments have gone up to 1,173. You have your 885, but then it's actually slightly more than this because of the fact that it's stress tested at 5.5%. So now the whole thing comes to 1,173. But it's actually not just 1,173. You then have to multiply this by 125%, 1,173 pounds times by 1.25. Then that essentially gives me 1,466 pounds. So what this means is this. If you wanted to get 80% loan on this property, which means 256,000 pounds in mortgage debt, then the rental on this property has to be at least 1,466 pounds for the bank to give you the mortgage at 80% loan to value. So even though your mortgage payments are only 885 pounds, they wanna make sure the rent is at least 1,466 because you might be getting a 3% rate or a 4% rate. But the reason the bank stress tested the 5.5% is because if interest rates do go up, what they don't want is that people's rents are so low that suddenly everyone starts to default in their mortgages because let's say the property is rented out at a thousand pound a month. Suddenly the interest rate goes up like it is in the economy right now from 4% to 5.5% your mortgage payments jump up to 1,173. All of a sudden, you've got a tenant in there paying you a thousand pound a month. Your mortgage payments are way more than a thousand pound a month and you don't have the money to pay your mortgage off. And so you have to default on the mortgage and the bank has to repossess your house. After the 2008 property crash, they essentially made sure that if they did give a mortgage out, it had to be at 5.5%. The reason there's an even bigger buffer on top at the 125% is because you still have maintenance issues and you have voids and all those sort of issues that if you have those issues and the rates have gone up, the bank wants to make sure there's enough buffer in place. If all those issues were to happen, you know, the property still makes enough rental to cover the mortgage payments. This in a way is good because the bank is almost like doing the work for you to make sure that is this property actually profitable. So now let me take this back to gross yield and why this number is so relevant when it comes to making the most amount of cash flow and the highest return on your investment. So now let's just go back to the gross yield, which is rent divided by the value. The rent is on this property is 21,000 pounds, which is this much. The value is 320,000 pounds and the mortgage amount, which is 80%, is 256,000 pounds, which is covered, colored by this green area. So now we know that the monthly payments have to be 1,466 per month. So if I multiply this by 12, you get 17,592. Now, like I said, to pass the stress testing, the rent has to be more than this amount. So now in this case, that is true because the 21,000 rent is more than the 17,592 pounds. So therefore the bank says, yep, you can get this mortgage and you can refinance as much money as possible. Let's say hypothetically you're in a situation where the gross yield wasn't 6.6%, but it was lower. Let's say the property value was the same, but you weren't getting 21,000 pounds rent, but you're only getting 15,000 pounds rent. But now we have an issue because 
The bank is saying, well, the rental has to be at least 7,592 to get a 80% loan, but you only have a rental of 15,000 pounds. So therefore you can't actually get a 80% loan on this property because you don't have enough rent coming in to, to service those mortgage payments. So it's not that they won't give you a loan. They just won't give you an 80% loan. They might give you a 75% loan or a 70% loan. The loan amount will keep coming down until you get to a situation where the rental income that you're getting is the same as this calculation here. So like going back to the whole thing, I know this is a bit of a long-winded explanation, but if you're trying to make the highest return on your money, what you want to do is you want to buy a property at a lot of value and then pull out as much money as physically possible. But if your gross yield isn't that good, then the bank doesn't let you pull that money back out because the stress test calculations won't actually pass. And so the amount you can actually get back is going to be significantly lower. And so therefore what ends up happening is, let's say you spend 288,000 pounds, you won't get 256 back. You might only get, let's say 200,000 pounds back. And in that case, the money left in isn't 31,000 pounds, suddenly it's 88,000 pounds. So if I was to then do the same calculation again, you're making 7,080 every year, but this time it's cost you 88,000 pounds, then the return on investment isn't gonna be 22%, it's gonna be significantly worse. Now the return on investment has dropped down to 8%. Those of you who are actually very picky about the maths, technically it's not actually 7,080 because your mortgage payments have gone down because now you've taken a smaller loan. But it, I mean, generally lo looking at the big picture, what's happened is a lot more money has been left in. And the reason a lot more money has been left in is because the gross yield on the property is not that good. The next thing is the net yield. The net yield put simply is the cash flow divided by the value. The yearly profit in this situation is 7,080. The value of the property is 320,000 pounds. That comes to 2.21%. Those are all the numbers on the Battersea Park project. The next property I bought was in London Bridge, which was in May of 2019. Then I bought Vauxhall in June 19. Brixton in the September of 2019, and then West Hampstead in May 2020. They were essentially all basically the same type of project where I bought these one bedroom properties, I'd strip them out completely, I refurb them, then I would furnish them, and then I would rent these properties out. So these are the numbers for those properties. I'm not gonna go through every single one since I've gone through the first one in a lot of detail. I'll just leave the screen up for 10 seconds. Maybe I'll cue some music in the background whilst you guys have a look, and then we'll move on to the next one. So let's move on to the next one. So in October of 2020, I bought a three bedroom terrace house in Stevenage, which I then converted into two flats. So I bought that for 265,000 pounds. It cost 84,659 to, to turn that into two flats. So that included the refurb, the stamp duty, the legals, financing, everything. It was then revalued at 410,000 pounds. And at that stage, again, I got a new mortgage on both of the flats. And so the mortgage combined was 307,500. So the monthly rent on that is 1,950, which multiplied by 12 is 23,000. The mortgage on that is actually not that high, especially when I got it last year. So the mortgage payments for both the flats comes to 767 pounds. I manage the property myself. I, I don't have any management fees. I account for our 10% maintenance buffer. Even though this is flats and we own both of the flats, we have building insurance in this one rather than paying a service charge. So the building insurance is about 23 pounds per month. And so the monthly cash flow comes to 965 pounds per month. To get the yearly cash flow, you just multiply that by 12, which is 11,585. And so once you account for the 19% corporation tax, that comes to 9,384 pounds. The return on investment, that's 27% and the money left in is 47,000 pounds. So if you're trying to make more cash flow, if you look at this project, the money left in is 43,000 pounds, which isn't too dissimilar to a lot of the one bedroom flats, which I turn into two bedroom flats. But the cash flow on this is 11 and a half grand compared to almost six grand, almost seven grand, four and a half, five, seven grand. Plus this is actually, you know, outside of London. So the yield and those sort of things are slightly better as well. This way, by turning a house into two flats, you end up with two rental properties in one and you tend to have a bit of a better profit margin. So maybe if you are looking to focus more on the cash flow, then you could consider turning a house into two flats rather than buying one property at a time. So the last project is a mixed use building I bought last year in November of 2021. It was a clinic downstairs and a three bedroom flat upstairs. We then ended up getting planning permission to turn that into four flats. So we have two flats downstairs and two flats upstairs. That was purchased for 600,000 pounds. The total cost, I don't know yet because the project is still ongoing. The GDV, 
which is the value of what it should be worth. It should be about a million pounds. Each flat should be around the 250 mark. And so at that stage, I'm hoping to get a 75% mortgage, which means I have a mortgage of 750,000 pounds. The monthly rent on the four properties is 4,600 pounds. The yearly rent is 55,200. The mortgage payments, now this is based on a 3% mortgage payment, and I'll touch upon this in a second about what will happen to this if mortgage rates do tend to go up. Based on 3% interest, the mortgage payments should have been 1,874 pounds. No management, the maintenance, I've got 10% which is 460 pounds. The building insurance comes to about 68 pounds per month. And so the monthly cash flow is just shy of 2,200 pounds, which means the yearly cash flow is about 26,000 pounds, which is like the equivalent of a starting salary almost. And so after tax, that comes to about 21,365 pounds. I don't have the return on investment because the project's not done yet, nor do I have the money left in. But the gross yield is 5.5% and the net yield is 2.6%. So now if you take the entire portfolio and I'll do a quick calculation here, it should make about 67,000 pounds a year. If you want to do that post tax, then that comes to 54,592. That is the reason I got into property in the first place. You buy enough investment properties and you can make a lot of cash flow and then you know you can use that cash flow to sustain yourself and then you know you can do whatever the hell you want. This is the big thing that we get onto. Let's see what the impact is on this property at a 6% interest rate. Let me go back to the mortgage calculator. If I have a 750 pound loan on this property and the mortgage payments are only 3%, the monthly mortgage payments are 1,874 pounds. But now let's say the interest only mortgage is no longer 3%, that is jumped to 6%. The mortgage payments end up pretty much doubling to 3,751 pounds. My monthly profit was only just shy of 2,200 pounds. The payments have gone up by 1,900 pounds. And so now my monthly cash flow has dropped to 321 pounds all the way from 2200 pounds. I'm losing about 1900 pounds per month. That comes to like more than 20,000 pounds a year. The property still makes money, but of course, significantly less. So that is how drastic of an impact interest rates can have on your cash flow. But there is a flip side to this because when rates go up, something else happens. But this article from the Financial Times goes on to say, research from the property size Zoopla found that rents increased by nearly 20% in inner London in the first quarter of 2022 and by 10% in outer London. And then some lending agents have said that we're seeing reports of up to 40% rent increases year on year. What's happening is when interest rates go up, it becomes more expensive to borrow money. And so maybe some landlords end up selling the property and some people don't buy investment properties because they're less, making less money. The supply of private rented accommodation has fallen sharply in London to a five-year low after buy to let investors sold up or reduced their exposure. So because the rates have gone up and so the landlord's costs have increased, some of that cost is getting passed on to renters. So rentals go up. But at the same time, let's say someone's in the market to buy their own home, but now they're no longer buying their own home because the rates have gone up so much that they can't make the money monthly mortgage payments and they can't borrow the money from the bank. So more people are now renting properties. And on top of that, if some landlords are selling their properties and getting out of the game, the supply of properties is coming down, the demand of properties is going up. And as a result, what's going to end up happening is the rents are going to go up. And so generally when you have a recession, I don't have the data of 2008, but I think even then the rents went up. So it's a bit of a tricky situation to be in because obviously with the cost of living crisis and everything else, it's not really ideal to pass a cost on. But at the same time, when there is huge demand for something that is naturally going to drive the price up. And let's say the rents go up by 10%. Now the rent isn't 4,600 anymore, it's gone up to 5,060 pounds. So as a result, your monthly cash flow now at least goes up to 781 pounds as opposed to the 321 pounds based on the 6% interest rate. So it's not really as simple as your cash flow being completely wiped out because of the interest rate rise, it, because it also has knock-on effects on things like the rental market. Based on what's happening in the market right now, this is how my investment strategy would change. I don't think the mortgage rates are gonna stay at 6% in the long run, but when I started a property business, I was sucked into this world of financial freedom that if you have enough buy to that properties and you can be financially free and you can live off that income. Though that can be true, this example just shows you the impact it can have if rates were to slightly change. And what's happening with the market right now is changed my perspective on property. I still think it's one of the best long-term investments you can make, but maybe if you're trying to do this for cash flow, then you shouldn't rely on your standard buy to let properties a bit too much because over a long period, the property price is going to go up. You'll still make a decent amount of cash flow and those sort of things. But if you rely too much on the short term, then you can be in these sort of situations. If you're trying to invest in property for the short-term cash flow, then you might be better off doing one of the other property strategies like HMOs, what I essentially started doing, which was renting properties and then subletting them on Airbnb, because essentially that can help you make cash flow significantly faster. What I would do is I would treat property as a long-term investment. And so when I make money from something else, I'll keep pumping that into property and keep buying more investment properties, but not rely too much on the buy to cash flow in the short term.